Oh, hello. I'm back for more of my licensed game shenanigans, returning to something uh, I was really pondering, which is whether I should play the SNES version of The Adventures of Mighty Max. That's what's on screen here. Um, before this, I played the Sega Genesis version. And yeah, this game is just uh, not the most enjoyable. Uh, and it gets harder on SNES because on Genesis, they at, at the very least give you, say, six hits before you lose a life. On SNES, they only give you three hits. So I really had to consider, you know, can I make, can I do this without dying a lot? Because I didn't want to have to die a lot and start over, over and over and over again. So there's a compromise. I have enabled a cheat for unlimited lives. I think that'll, you know, I, I do this often anyway, where I, if I'm going to get through a game in a recording like this, uh, I'll just enable a cheat to, to make it more possible. And that's what we've done here. So, well, first of all, I forgot we need to uh, unpause the game. Obviously not playing on original hardware. Same as like Genesis, I didn't do it there. Yeah, so now we're playing. Oh man, I don't know what it is about them squishing these game screens, but they like to do it. Oh, look at that. And, and here's the reason why I have chosen to uh, play the SNES version. It looks a lot better. There, there's, there are significant improvements across the board, uh, not counting the fact that they made it more difficult to play through because you lose more lives more easily, but I don't know. There's just enough changes, and it's short enough, frankly. It's a short enough game that I'm like, eh, sure, I'll, I'll go through one more time on SNES because it would weigh on my mind if I didn't, I guess. <laughs> just being a bit completionist about it. Yeah, I mean, here we're watching the attract mode of the jungle level, uh, and already having just played the Sega Genesis version like 10 minutes ago, I had like a dark five minutes of the soul where I was deciding if I'd play this, and I decided, sure, I'll, I'll play it. But uh, yeah, it just looks so much better, so I think it's worth going through. So, first of all, we're gonna poke at our options. Uh, we lose options. We, lo we lose the sound test, I think. Yes, yes, we lose the sound test on SNES, but we don't need it. Password system, same as before. Every time you beat a level, you can you get a password. And so, on Sega Genesis, they call this mode easy. On SNES, they call it practice. The thing is, there's no difference between the two other than gameplay. Like, you still get the same finale. There's no, like, thanks for trying, come back on normal difficulty sort of thing. They just let you beat the game on practice mode, basically. So I'm going to do that. And again, I have unlimited lives, so I'm already cheating anyway, but the difference is that if you play normal, every stage has more of these items to collect, so I don't feel like doing that. Just make it as quick as possible. So, um, I played... Yeah, they give you multiple characters, because it is there's a two-player mode, where two characters can... two players can, you know, try to complete the game, basically, uh, in split-screen mode. But that means a single player, you can just choose any one of the extra characters. So I think as I played as Max on Sega Genesis, I'm going to play as B here on <laughs> SNES. Uh, this is a change from the Sega Genesis version, which is that uh, on Genesis, you have to pick the window and then you get the, the, the stage, the actors walking on screen like that. Here, you, you can just highlight them and they'll send them to you. So last time, I realized the jungle level is the best level, and I want that to be the, the last level, so I'm going to go ahead and beat both of these first. So let's just yeah, get Volcano out of the way. Yeah, I mentioned this in the Genesis playthrough, but... Uh, actually, yeah, I didn't mention some basics, which is that... Oh yeah, there's this neat looking around feature here. Stop following me, jerk. There it is. I have to remember my buttons, but um, yeah, the game is developed by WSJ Design, uh, published by Ocean. Some real basic info there. Uh, it was released for Genesis and SNES. It was going to be on Amiga, but that got cancelled according to one of the devs. Basic objective of every single stage, of every single level, is to find these uh, parts, machine parts, of the Skull Masters, evil machines. Skull Masters like the main villain. Uh, you're supposed to collect them. 
uh, take them to the portals in the game. Uh, see, I took a hit there already. I lost one out of three hearts. Already. Which is uh, not fair at all to me. But it is a choice. Because I feel like SNES was always like the friendlier platform. So for them to make the SNES version harder uh, is interesting. But again, it's like it's like an hour, hour and a half playthrough, so they're definitely trying to make this as last as long as possible. Uh, especially if you rent it. Jeez. But in the US, you would be this released in early 95. I have to question who is going to like a blockbuster to rent this in February 1995. You know what I mean? Hey, we picked up the cap. Uh, AKA the power pill. Let's take a Genesis. I don't know what happened. Can we make that jump? No, we can't. Oh, what a terrible waste of this ability. Um, this lets you pick up items and move them. Like, you can, you can hold items and jump. You can't do that normally. And I just wasted it completely. That sucks. Why couldn't I... What happened here? Oh, I was supposed to hit that. That level. Lever. Oh, that sucks. That really sucks. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, the penguins. So, yeah, this volcano level. Someone thought it would be funny if they put a penguin in there. Hey. There are points, but I don't know what the points get you. Like, straight up, no idea. Anyway, I'm skipping uh, an item right up there. I mean, th that's not even the lever I was looking for. I was looking for a lever for this port, this platform, but oh well. All right, let's just one one thing at a time. Let's go grab that one uh, item. Uh, what else? Oh, it's so weird. I just played the, the Sega version, so it feels like repeating myself, but obviously this is two different playthroughs. Uh, I think I talked about Skullmaster being the main villain here, if you don't know already. Skullmaster is like the main villain. He's built some evil weapon, and you have to collect all these parts to prevent him from deploying the weapon. I think that's it. That's the setup. Uh, I'm following those arrows up at the top there. Sometimes you can jump through platforms, sometimes you cannot. It's kind of weird that way. Alright, first things first. I, I'm wandering too much. I should just find uh, the item. Oh! Oh yeah. So, you, so you, you see there, I didn't lose a life because I have a cheat enabled so that I don't have to, you know, lose and start over because I don't want to do that. What else is basic that I should mention up top? So by this point in the show, oh, by this point in the toy line, because Mighty Max started as a toy line, uh, it was then uh, a TV show as well, I think in 93, 94. Um, so like the character designs you see on the box, those are from the TV show. Uh, and I suppose even Norman, Norman's a, a character exclusive to the show, or that originates with the show. But otherwise, there's just not a whole lot to recognize from that TV show. Like, they're banking on the popularity of the show to sell this more than the toys. Um, but, like, all of this is just very generic environments. Like, none of the... Like, the, the whole point of Mighty Max to me is that it's a Monster of the Week format. Like, every episode, there's a different monster to, you know, see, uh, deal with. But um, this game doesn't do that at all. <laughs> None of the main villains appear. There's no boss fights, none of that stuff. It's just generic environments like this. And puzzling your way through them, I guess? Because that is the goal, is to figure out how you can move the uh, item, the objectives, from one place to another. Uh, like I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to make my way to the item, but 
I have to figure out how, how to do this. Uh, that crazy moon jump is not a cheat. That's just how the game is. <laughs> they just decided, like, you know what? We're going to give these characters insane hops. Why not? Again, I think to make up for level design. Like, they realized their levels were maybe a bit too unfair or something. And their solution was just give them insane uh, jumps. And that'll solve it. All right, we got this platform. Another volcano penguin. I was saying in my Sega playthrough that I think the penguin is like a... It's definitely a joke about like, isn't it funny if there's a penguin in, in the volcano level? But beyond that, I feel like it's a British thing. Like cute penguin characters in, in games. Based just on the fact that uh, when a, a game I do like, James Pond Robocod, has penguins in it. And that is a very British game. Like crazy British. But yeah, otherwise this game just has all the aesthetic qualities of a UK developed platformer. Like um, a game called Rat Trap comes to mind. It was for the Amiga and then it got reskinned to make uh, Krusty's Funhouse. Well, I passed the machine part because I was talking. Let's go find that. Oh no, did I just lose progress? I sure did. I'm getting really annoyed. Why can't I find this stupid machine part? Where is it? Give it to me. What? Oh, I think I finally saw it, at least. I don't know if I'll be able to, like, reach it, but <laughs> I think I spotted it. Yeah, I'm gonna run out of time. Which, uh, I mean, that's bad, because when you lose time, or run out of time, you lose a life. Uh, no progress. You, you retain all your progress, they just take a life from you. But since I have infinite lives enabled, it doesn't matter. Yeah, this thing, it's supposed to be like a ping pong gun. Ping pong, ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong ball gun. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm firing. If you hold the button, it's like a spread shot. <clears throat> and that's it. That's your main... Your main attractions are shooting and uh, lifting and throwing. And that's it. Yeah, so last time I, uh, when I played on Sega, the volcano was the last level, which I regret, because it's not a very compelling level. Like I said, the jungles that probably... This is my favorite. The jungle levels... The most, like, I don't know, visually interesting? Probably because it's the one different level. Most of them are not as just neat, I guess. All right, A stage complete. It's still weird to me how narrow the window is. I understand, like, on a CRT, it would have taken that image and stretched it out, but so it's my fault, I guess, for emulating. It just is weird. And my frame, I, like, the frame around my, like, capture setup here is for 4x3, but clearly, uh, this is less than 4x3. Alright, anyway, let's go. Oh, there's only one in here. That's nice of them. I just had a terrible thought. What if practice mode in SNES doesn't get me the finale, uh, the ending. If I if that happened, I would, you wouldn't be watching this. I would, I would have to go back and replay on normal mode, and I would never acknowledge this happened. But so we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens when we get to the end of this playthrough. No, I blew it, but we're good, we're good. No, I don't want to, I don't want that. This is what I want. They only required one. I see no reason to hang out uh, at all. I haven't, I, if I was a better researcher, I would have looked it up, but I wonder what the state of Amiga was by 95 or 94. Like clearly not good enough. It, it, like if, if Amiga was making money in terms of selling games, they would have, proceeded with their plan for the Amiga port, but they didn't do it. That tells me Amiga was maybe it wasn't that big for 
this type of game, I guess. Or any game. Because I, I do feel like Amigo is dead by the mid-90s. Alright, well there's a portal. Now we need to fight. Oh. Okay, doesn't matter. I've lost probably five, six lives by now. So, I'm still in the first level. If, if I was only in the first level and I already lost six lives, I'd have to give up. Because there would, there's no way I'd be able to make it to the end from that point. So again, SNES version. Just by virtue of the fact that they cut the, the damage you have per life uh, in half, that alone makes it so much more difficult to finish this game. And I was not willing to suffer through that. I mean, not suffering. Again, it's a short game. So playing through it on SNES after having played it on Genesis is like, yeah, whatever. I'll do it because it's so short. But um, yeah, it's just, again, not, <laughs> not a terribly fun game. Uh, to play it twice. All right, playing through it once is like, oh, I, I totally missed that. I left it right here. Stop bopping me, dude. Alright, okay. We're getting there. We were getting there. So, you know what? I'm curious. I'm gonna let this bat. Yep. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm that yes, it is one hit per. One heart lost per enemy hit is how this works. Alright, uh, yeah, we can do that. They did change the physics a bit, too, between Genesis and SNES. Like, the jumping feels better on SNES than it did on Genesis. It's not as not as out of control. Like, there's a little more... Like, I feel a little more control over the, the high distance. Um, same with the throwing. Throwing feels better. Oh, I see that. So, I mean, what do you know? You know, when you, when you have roughly a year be uh, between versions of the game, you, you get some time to improve stuff. And you get to add all sorts of neat animations and art to the background, which definitely makes this game look a lot better. Although it is, yeah, the, the foreground and the, the flooring, that all looks the same. It really is just the backgrounds that got the big uh, improvement. Why is there a switch right there? I have no idea what that switch does. Well, whatever. Let's go. Let's go grab our other part, which is apparently right to the left, or directly to the left. The funny thing about Mad Max, Mad Mighty Max, or that makes it interesting as well, uh, is that it's kind of a dead license. I, I don't know if Bluebird. I'll have to do this research for my the, my final video where I kind of summarize the, the history of all this, but I don't know if Bluebird exists, and they, they hold the rights. Uh, the TV show is not on any platform, it wasn't on DVD even. Uh, and that's how you know it's rough. When a TV show like this didn't make it onto DVD, that tells you that the rights were really messy. <laughs> because otherwise, companies uh, during the time of DVD were more than willing to spend the money put this stuff uh, on DVD. Even if it has no subtitles, no special features, you, you were certain you could... You know, like, it, like, it was certain you could make some money just by putting something on DVD. So the fact that this didn't make it onto DVDs, I don't know, it tells you something. Uh, fear not, though. Other people uh, have taken it upon themselves to not just make sure this is available, stay online, but uh, also to remaster it. There's been like a really good uh, remastering effort of the TV show. And, and that's why, I, like, it's not the entire show because they needed, uh, they, they also put up a video explaining uh, what they're doing, but they need the retail copies, the retail VHS releases. I forgot to mention that this was on VHS, but in order to remaster this the show and make it look good, they need, you know, the highest quality, 
quality possible for the episodes, which is the retail VHS releases. Um, but they're in Europe. <laughs> they were explaining how it's not easy to find those in Europe. And, um, and also, you know, they're available like on... And, uh, ooh, ooh, that's rough. That's not what I wanted. Now I have to find the switch for that thing. There it is. Uh, but yeah, so, so somebody has remastered most of Season 1, uh, and it looks really good. So I would recommend that for anybody who wants to check out some of the show. Uh, the rest of the show is available elsewhere, but um, it's like VHS copies, like home recording VHS copies. So not the best quality, but it's all we have. <laughs> it's literally, <clears throat> even if it's not like DVD quality, it is the best available quality. So it's like, well... If you, if you want to watch the whole show, that's that's all you have. Uh, and I appreciate that somebody did, did take the time to, to do that. Because I did like the show. I mean, that was my favorite part of the, all the everything I've done in relation to it. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Co completely unbelievable that they did that to me. So now I have to get this back. I guess it's not that far, but still kind of a jerk move. Yep, and that's... Alright, well I hope I don't lose too much progress here. No, we're good. Actually, is that gonna... Yeah, I did. So yeah. I mentioned this in my... In the Genesis one, I forgot to show it off here, but I, I was not into the toys at the time in the early 90s because I was a little too old for that stuff. But where is that? Da -da -da. I, I had to obviously obtain at least some artifact for the toys. So there it is. That's an example of a playset from this from this uh, show, I guess you'd call it. It has a little miniature Mighty Max. This one has a Frankenstein and a mad scientist. I think it's called Mighty Max Escapes from Skull Dungeon. It's one of the early ones. Uh-oh. This guy's blocking the way. Well, oh, get out of the way. There's that. There's this artifact here. They released a promotional comic that contains some, like, game manual level information about the video game. So, some artifacts. Not a copy of, you know, the game itself, but... <laughs> but, uh, some other neat things. Uh... And there are other Ma Mighty Max games besides the video game, actually. That's that's the other thing I'm looking forward to the most. It's It was watching the TV show and then getting to play these other games uh, with Mighty Max, just because I'm curious about them. So, uh, let's get rid of the space level. That's what I'm thinking of all this, by the way. It's not, let's beat the level. Let's let's get rid of it. Let's just get it out of the way so I don't have to, deal, don't have to deal with it later. Well, that sucked. That that falling down, that that was not good. I don't know what it is about machinery levels in in platformers of this era, but I never like them. Sonic has them. I don't like them. Um, uh, I mean, the only other game that comes to mind is it, the Itchy and Scratchy game, but many games had machinery levels. And I, what leap of faith? Okay, thanks. Thanks for nothing. Um, yeah, I don't like uh, machines, machine levels. I think they're boring. I prefer the nature levels, forests, jungles, etc. So, yeah, let's just get this thing out of the way. Oh, I picked up a cap. That means I can jump. That means I should go deposit this at the nearest portal somewhere. No, no, don't, don't do it, bro. No, we're not gonna make it. Why can't I make it? Is there a switch? Oh, jerks. I can't believe they're gonna do this to me. It was pointing, it's pointing me toward the portal, but I could not get to the portal. And I have been slighted. I am personally offended by, by what just happened there. And uh, I'm not gonna write a letter. <laughs> oh, what? Interesting. How do I get... Oh, there it is. Yeah, the... 
That's a difference from Sega Genesis. Um, on Genesis, if you throw an item... Try it. Just because I have infinite lives doesn't mean I have to, I have to take every hit. Uh, on Sega Genesis, if you stand up flat against the wall and you throw something, it goes over the wall. And they removed that feature from here, it looks like. This doesn't feel right to me, but let's let's keep going with it, see, see where we end up. Yeah, this feels like a, I'm meant to turn on a magnet somewhere. Let's see if we find one. No magnet here either. Hmm. I do not forgive that. Yeah, again, all the enemy design, arts, all the environments, art for the platforms looks the same as Sega Genesis. It's just the background looks... Like, on Sega Genesis, it has the scrolling background, but it's like one, basically, image that scrolls <laughs> in one direction. Here you have multiple planes, some parallax going on. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot better. That, mo that sun in the background and that gradient in the background isn't there on Sega Genesis. Also, yeah, like that sun looks like an egg, and that's definitely because they meant for this image to get stretched out on a CRT to make it round. So, so again, not, not playing the original experience at all, for, for, in many ways, both because I'm cheating and because I'm emulating. Well, I don't, under, I don't see how I can. Okay. You jerks, stop. Beat me up. <sighs> Flying enemies that s stick right above you. The most jerk move of jerk moves. Get out of here. There's a rock, but yeah, there's not even a catapult down here. Is there? Oh, there was a balloon, you idiots. That's me. Talking, calling myself the idiot. Uh, uh, I missed it. Let's go back. Let's go back with our mighty strength. So, of all the characters, of like the five, char six characters from the TV show, which is Max, Norman, Virgil, B, Felix, Skullmaster. Is that six? I think so. Um, I think B is the one that gets the least amount of screen time. She's like Max's buddy. And she does pop up every now and then. Like I, I, I've been rewatching, and I, I think she's popped up once in season. Oh, I needed that rock up there. Oh, but we have a balloon. Uh, yeah, I'm like maybe midway through season two, and she's popped up once. And then season one, she comes up maybe, I don't know, four, maybe five times. So she's not a star of the show. Uh, so I, I guess I'm glad then that this game lets me, you know, play as B, so, you know, she gets more time to do stuff. Because on, on the TV show, she got very little time. I just noticed the practice mode here. Uh, it's been like two items every time, right? Yeah. It's, it's, so it was three on Sega Genesis, and now they reduced it down to two. Oh. Buddy. Ooh, this feels like I'm gonna have to go back down <laughs> to, to to find another item and follow this exact same route. But uh, that's fine. Yeah, like uh, Max's other buddy. Are you? Wow, wow! You did that. You did that game. Sent me back to that platform. Man, I feel so spoiled sometimes because <laughs> it's like. How dare you inconvenience me, video game. I forgot about Spreadshot. What? I need to call that platform. What do you want me to do here? Game? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's really not good. They're not letting me uh, return to where I need to be. I don't know if I mentioned yet that 
the collectathon aspect with all the little items. Uh, ignore it. Uh, like, I really don't know what the items get you besides a score, and I'm not a score chaser sort of player, so I don't know. Oh, finally. Wow, that was real bad. I, I think on Genesis it's a lot easier to hit the switches that are off screen like that. Yeah, like I mentioned, this shipped in early 95, like February 95, and it does make you ask the question, like, why? <laughs> if, you had, if you had already shipped on Genesis in early 94, who decides to spend the money for a SNES port, like, in early 1995? I mean, I guess, I guess SNES is still big around then, but yeah, I don't know. Somebody did a, a PL or whatever, a profits and loss report to figure out, like, all right, what's it going to cost? And then how much money would we possibly make? And they decided, like, it's worth it. And I should say, oh, early 95 for the US, I think in Europe it was 94, like late 94, when they got the SNES port. Oof, big fall. Is this still space stage one? This feels like it's still stage one. Probably, I don't know. It all it all blurs together eventually. Alright, so let's send this up there. What? No, drop it. Ooh, I was real worried they were going to uh, drop it off somewhere where I don't need it to be. Oh, come on. Oh, now I have to wait for it. Yep, I have to hang out, wait for it to get back. Yeah, if the devs were mean, they would have totally had that kill me. <laughs> but they're not that mean. Alright, so there's that. Let me bring it back here. What? Oh, there it is. Actually, an indicator would be nice. If it said, like, stage 1-1 one -one complete. Just to remind me, personally. Like, so this is a feature for me specifically. To remind me uh, how far I am. In my playthrough. Yeah, by this point, I think I've lost enough lives that I would have been at the end of my second continue, I, I want to say. So again, I, I absolutely would not have been able to complete this game uh, without a cheat. I wonder if there are speedrunners for this game. <gasps> no, wasted. All right. I, I, I grabbed the cap pickup. And now I'm stuck here because it won't let me go through this until I hit the switch. Damn it. There's only one in here. That's... Uh, that's fine. As always, I'll take it. Uh, hey. A really easy one, too. I'm glad that the contrast I set up here with the the toy, I forget the name of the set. There's like a Skull Mountain playset in which uh, it's it's much bigger than the one I just showed you. Uh, and it gives you like Skull Master figure and all these other figures. But you can see there that again, their original design of Skull Master is this kind of generic. I mean, I guess it's the same, mostly the same design. But for the cartoon show, they really went in on the, like, skull face thing. <laughs> Whereas this guy up here, he's just got, like, a... I don't know how to describe that. He kind of looks like the bald dudes from Doom. 
those, those pale bald guys. I don't, I don't know. He looks more like generic wizard, but the, the skull face angle I think gives him a lot of character. Alright, we have two in here. So let's go find uh, one of them, at least. There it is. Uh, oh, oh. This looks very familiar. Yeah, I haven't mentioned it yet, but level design wise, the two games have been. I, I'll say 90% identical. I'll just put that number out there. So, and then again, that's why I debated whether I'd play the SNES version in full. Because they are the same game. <laughs> again, this is me just playing for like some of the gameplay differences and the visual differences, but it is just the same game. Frankly, another reason I'm playing the SNES version is uh, you know, I, I always do, like, I, I think of these things as a series. Like, I pick a license and play all of this series of games based on the license, but... Mighty Max has a video game, on, which was on Genesis and SNES. It has two LCD handhelds, which I will be playing. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> there are some board games, but that, that stretches beyond what I'm willing to check out on the channel. The LCD games at least are electronic games, so I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, it was just also like, yeah, this makes it feel more like a series, because I've checked out multiple um, versions of the thing, and I have multiple videos to show for it. Oh, wait, it's this way. And I should say, actually, I'll take this, I'll take that back. There are three LCD handhelds, but one of them... I can't confirm ever got released. Like, there's a photo in a French Mighty Max wiki showing that there's this additional a third L LCD handheld game that um, I've never seen anywhere else. Certainly not on eBay. Which makes me suspect that it was like a Europe-only release or something, and it was a limited Europe-only release. So it was hard to find. Or rather, I could not find it. And I guess I'll mention that. I did, I did buy the LCD handhelds. To, to play, uh, you know, in full, and play for the channel and everything. I don't know what that switch does. What does that do? Oh, platform. How am I going to get the machine part up there? This feels really very familiar. I think I'm meant to go this way. And then that way. Uh, but yeah, so... So currently I'm looking at like, maybe, oh, wrong place for that. Should have been on the left. Yeah, five videos. The brief history video, which I always do for these, in which I just summarize everything. The two ports of the Adventures of Mighty Max video game, and two LCD handhelds. I think that's it. Um, and I've always, it depends on the game. Like there's a King of the Hill PC game I was able to do a whole series about uh, just because it was so there were so many compelling angles to it that I I didn't plan on it but I ended up realizing like oh I have a lot to talk about <laughs> with this one game so uh, I did talk a whole lot about it that way oh oh uh, but yeah currently I think it'll I think it'll be about five for this one. I don't have a whole lot else to say about it, frankly. Beyond some long play, some, you know, commentary runs, and then some, uh... And then that's it. In the brief history. That's all I need. Whoa! Stop it. So we have a rock there. Oh. Yeah, that stop sign is the, um... Uh, freeze. Enemy freeze. It makes everyone stand in place. Oh, I don't even know if I talked about the cap difference yet. I think I think I might have, but... Well, if I'm repeating myself, sorry, but... There's an item called the Power Pill on Sega Genesis, which makes you in invincible, gives you high jumps, faster running, etc. Uh, and it should have been the cap, right? The, the, the key item that the hero uses to do, do stuff. Uh, but it wasn't, for some reason. Uh, on Genesis, they decided to create a power pill, but 
yeah, when they had time to work on this SNES port, somebody realized, like, oh, we should have made it a, a, a the cap. Uh, and they were right. It should have been that all along. Oh, here we go. Stuck again. Because I don't know where to send this thing. I'm going to dare to go this way. Yep, see? Yeah, no, note to anybody who happens to be watching and they decided they want to play this game. If you're ever stuck, just uh, walk away for, for a bit. <laughs> go, go somewhere else in, in the level. Uh, you might find some, some other direction. Another cap. Alright, great. I have a cap. And I have insanely high jumps. Where's the item? Oh no! Oh no! That's not where I want that. I just sent it back to where it was before. God, son of a wiener. Wow, that was some really lame uh, profanity. <laughs> Oof. Well, maybe that's good. Right there. Hmm. I think this is good. I think we're getting there. Hold on, before I drop... Oh, see? That, that would not have been good. Alright, so if I throw the item... Alright, there it is. I have to throw it. Oh. Done. I think that's it for space. Looking into the toys behind this, um, again, I, I I missed it completely. I, I just think I was a bit too old for them, but uh, it must have been a really cool time to be a kid when um, you could be into Mighty Max and you could just be like collecting these things. I, I guess as a collector of, of stuff, <laughs> I, I get it. It's like, oh yeah, this, if, if I was just like a few years younger, when this was the thing, this would have totally been my jam. There it is, it closed. Finally. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really neat collectibles. Because they're small. Like, that's the perfect collectible. It's a bunch of small things you can put on a shelf. So that must have been real fun to, to do. To collect. Uh, even now, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other... Uh, plenty of... Oh, here, I have to decide. Let's get rid of water first. Uh, but yeah, it is a neat si series of, of toys. I don't know that they ever brought it back, either. Again, that's that's what makes me question about whether bl a Bluebird still exists. Oh yeah, I forgot about this feature where you can hold a button and look around. Uh, Sega does not have this, because they only have three buttons available. Whereas on SNES, you have a couple of more buttons. Uh, three more. Here you have to hold the um, a, a button, and you can do this. Um, but yeah, the other thing I've noticed about these toys, like like any other collectible uh, based on pop culture, is they're very expensive. Like, like I'm not even gonna. I was I was gonna say I'm not even gonna say how much I paid for the, the the couple of toys that I bought, but I don't think it was that much. But it was more than retail. I guess that's automatically that's like ridiculous. No. Oh no, this sucks. Also, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> there it is. Well, we found the portal. We wasted a cap power up. Not, not great. Uh, I'll tell you right now, this background looks so, so much better <laughs> than what was on Sega Genesis. I think it was just a black background on Sega. So, this was a case where Nintendo does what Sega don't. That's interesting. Again, I think Sega could have handled all these extra visuals. They just ran out of time. <laughs> they just had to ship that that version of the game. So when they had the extra time for this one, somebody said, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's just, let's, you know, pay some artists. All right, there's, there's that. Oh, oh that's, that makes the game so much nicer to play through when you can look ahead. Can we just 
pick up the thank you. Uh, but to wrap up my tirade, of, tirade about the toys, they are neat, there are a lot of them, and they are expensive. <laughs> uh, so at the very least, it's fun to poke around at the, in, in the wiki, Mighty Max wiki, just to see like, oh, that was, that worked out. Uh, yeah, it's fun to see what sort of uh, fun toys they were coming up with at the time. Uh, I listened to a podcast called What a Cartoon, where the uh, these, the hosts just watch an episode of an old cartoon and talk about it. And they watched an episode of Mighty Max, and they pointed out that the toy of Mighty Max, it's basically, I mean, it, 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 it came out, you know, it released after the Game Boy, but <clears throat> it had to compete with the Game Boy as like a pocket entertainment thing, uh, object. <clears throat> Man, I've got, I've got the fro frog throat going on. So they were pointing out, like, yeah, like, when you have a... The idea of, like, a, a Mighty Max playset is you can carry around this little world and play with it, and it fits in your pocket. Eh, backpack. So, but once you have a Game Boy, um, it's hard to compete. So, uh, they were, as... You know, they were trying to explain, like, why it might have gone away by, like, 95. I think the, the toys were, were over, but... Um, I mean, it was, one, it was the fad, fadification of any popular thing. Eventually, you know, people are over it, but, but also, yeah, it just, it had to compete with Game Boy and other ways to, like, entertain yourself with, like, a small handheld, uh, you know, device. They said it a lot better than I did. You can look it up. It's called What a Cartoon, hosted by, um, Bob Mackie and Henry Gilbert. Uh, and it's a good show. Check that out. If you want to hear more about the cartoon uh, and the toy line and everything, they do a much better job of uh, talking about the research and the history and stuff. And I am wasting time because I'm not paying attention to where I should be. There it is. All right. Oh, yep, I see it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have tossed it off there. How high does that go? That goes really high. Oh, but now I have to hit the switch again. All right, so yeah, let's redeposit this thing here. Another reason I just decided to, you know, check out Mighty Max in general here is the Monster of the Week format. Both of the, the sh toy, the toy is designed this, around this exactly, but also the TV show. Uh, I love that format. It, it, I guess that refers to TV specifically, but like shows like The X-Files or, or anthology shows. Like, I like having something different in every episode. Like a different villain, a different concept, or something cool going on. Um, this game <laughs> doesn't really deliver on that. It has different level environments, but it's kind of lame uh, in that regard. But like the TV show Mighty Max does that perfectly. Every single episode, though there's a few villains that return, but that's like two or three. Most of the episodes are original, based on the toys, of course. They, they basically would take a toy playset and then frame an episode around that, that villain or that theme. Again, I'm wandering off because I'm talking too much. Uh, but yeah, that's another reason Mighty Max appeals to me. Uh, it's just that it's, it's Monster of the Week. It's a different cool monster to check out from one episode or from one toy to the next. What am I? Oh, we're back on this again. Poor Felix is not going to get any screen time because I'm not going to do a third playthrough of this for any reason. And I mean that. After this recording, I think this will be the... Alright, I need a rock. How did I not... not... 
see that rock right there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I'll be returning to this game ever again. Alright, finally. My goodness. <laughs> I took a bit longer than I wanted it to take, but we made it. And... What do you mean the portal is right below me? What... What are... What... What... <sighs> okay, there's the portal. I left the thing up there. Okay, I see. Okay, that's fine. It's all good, video game. I, I see what you were putting down here. But let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, is this the end of the level? No, I think it's stage one of the water level. Again, I wish there was this indicator saying stage 3-1 or whatever. Yep, more water. Sad dolphin. Well, you're walking all hand, dolphin. That, that, that ain't right. There's something off there. I don't know if murdering dolphins is the solution to them walking on land, but it's, uh, it's, it is weird. Ooh, only one item to pick up. But also look at how toothy they are. Weird toothy dolphins. Well, no, that being toothy is not re reason to uh, kill dolphins. Now I have to look that up after this. I'm going to have to look up uh, the record for longest teeth in a, in a dolphin, which I'm sure will be a very, like, disturbing image. Oh! Okay. It, most of the time, the puffer fish just floats in the water, so you can't really get a hold of them. All right, buddy. I need to take you that way. Actually, it's really weird that those dolphins make any sound at all. Whoa, what the? I'm just figuring out that the items have like a chain effect, where if you, you collect like 10 in a row, you get like 10,000 bonus points or something. I guess we'll go this way, but I need to take it. Oh! Do I have enough clearance to get it up? Come on, Norman. You could be helping me out right now. Or you could be a jerk. I mean, look at that guy. He looks, he looks pretty buff. He could probably carry this thing himself and jump. Uh, yes. Is it further up? It's probably right up there. Oh, ease up, turtle. This would not help, so let's not go that way. I need a balloon or a magnets. Oh. Or this thing, which means we need a rock. No, no, no. Are you kidding? Just stay on the thing. <laughs> anyway, I believe I saw a rock, so let's go gather that. Again, this is an 11-year-old child. <laughs> you should remember that. Same with Max and... All, all the kids you play as, they're all 11-year-old children picking up these boulders. There's something off with this seesaw. No, there's something... Okay. Let's just get out of here.
Oh man, what else is there to say? This, this, is, this will be my last chance this playthrough. Well, that's not true. I'm, I'm going to record a brief history video as well. But I think I've talked about all the main stuff. There's a thread. I guess I can... Let's pause. <laughs> yeah, there's a thread from 2010 on a, uh, I think it's a Amiga, English Amiga board, that's what it's called. Uh, and they talk about how it was meant to be released on Amiga, AGA only, whatever that means. Yeah, it's just a thread of people talking about how uh, Wayne, I think Smithson, one of the lead designer, uh, looks like he confirmed a few things. Oh, they even checked with, with him. Uh, he had the source and all the stuff for the Amiga version, but he moved many times and lost the discs. Interesting. Yeah, there's, there's just a little thread where people are talking about amongst themselves about how they could find that, that lost Amiga port. Uh, good luck to them. Actually, that's a that's a pretty major. Oh, see that that's how you know I'm not a good content creator because, uh, like, any good person or anyone any good researcher running a YouTube channel would take it upon themselves to find this lost media. Lost media stories are really popular right now on YouTube, as you probably know. So if I was more dedicated, I could I could do it. I could try to track down these people, track down this lost Amiga port of the game uh, and you know <clears throat> talk about it show it off I'm sure it would look like this more <laughs> or less yeah like visual differences to me are never t that compelling a reason to look go after ports but it's only when like there's like a lost level right like a level that didn't make it into other versions that's like whoa that's a big deal Ooh, I got a one-up so, but, but I guess that's the point, is you don't, one, one cannot know. You can't know what's in there until you do the research and the work and find the thing. Oh, it's directly below this, which means I have to find a switch somewhere to open that, that door or the passage. That's probably it. Oh, that's neat. Ooh, yeah, there's no way to see what's down there, but I am gonna risk it. Oh. Worked out. Blowfish. Where is it? Yeah, let's just go find this missing thing. Oh yeah, I forgot that I was poking around for other things to talk about, but I think that's it. I think it is just this, I'll link to the thread. And anyone who's listening to this and wants to know more, there's a thread with like scans of like an ad talking about the Amiga version and some information about the developers uh, talking about the, the Amiga version and whether they have the code or not. So um, it's worth, worth reading, I guess. Plus I think it is the one source of information on <clears throat> the Amiga version. So I'll link to it. I'm losing my voice. It's, it's been, I guess, a few hours of recording now, so that sounds about right. That sounds about right. All right, so I want to get, hmm. How am I going to get this thing up there? Because if you do that, it's just going to fall off again. But I do want to get it onto there. What I need is a cap. One of the one of the cap uh, pickups, pickup item pickups, so that I can just haul this thing the rest of the way. So let's see if we can find one. Well, there's a Norman pickup. I guess I'll grab that. Whatever. There's a portal. <laughs> there it is. All right, great. So there's the cat. There's a the portal. Ooh. 
Norman just ditches you the moment you're dead. He's like, oh, this kid's dead, I'm out of here. Alright, so if I pick up this cap, then I'm gonna have to jump to the left. I think it's doable. So let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. We're getting there. Solid. Pick it up. We can go back this way we came. Speedy, speedy. Straight down. And we made it. I'm not sure. Wow, I'm just noticing how orange my light is, which, yeah. It's a very orange lighting here. Sweet. That's the end of the water level, which again, not a fan of. I'm glad to be rid of that. Jungle is my favorite one. I'm going to save it for last by going to the Inca one first. Yeah, yeah, I, I harped on this a lot <laughs> in the Genesis playthrough, but the Inca level has Inca elements. Like, the art back there kind of looks like Inca uh, civilization statues. Also, there's, there's art, period. Sega Genesis background, uh, like every level. Here, it's just, if it's not solid black, it's something real, real weak. So, th there is art. I guess that's a positive, but... Uh, they just combined Egyptian with Inca, basically, and said, uh, you know, they both have pyramids, whatever. Good enough. But that's a... I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what, how someone makes that choice. Right? Like, if you have elements of both, how do you choose one or the other? Uh, real weird. Uh, design choices. Alright, we gotta... Oh, do I want to launch this thing up? Wait, what? Oh. Okay, so we... Oh. I remember this part on Sega Genesis, and I didn't think it could pass through the ceiling. But I, I guess it could have. <laughs> I blew it there. Uh, yeah, let's keep sending this thing all the way up. It's also weird, because you can just hold the jump button, and the character will just jump repeatedly. Pick up those teddy bears, which I think are meant to be Inca statues. Again, the Inca people I don't think had a cat motif in their in their stuff, but the Egyptians sure did. Same with that scarab on the wall. So again, they're just they're taking these elements, they're just like, eh, mash it all together. What what do these dumb kids know? I think the TV show uh, does a better job of being sensitive about, like, cultural representation of, of all these places they travel. I could still think of a few times when they, they're not. Like, they go to Haiti at some point in the TV show. Uh, it's like an episode about zombies. And at some point, you have, like, a just rando who's dressed like Baron Samedi. He's just wearing, like, a top hat. So they're just kind of leaning into like voodoo. They don't say voodoo though. And it's it's not voodoo that is the culprit. It's more like a Cthulhu thing going on, but... Uh, but yeah, you know, they, they have to show something, right? Because the whole idea of Mighty Max is not just the monster of the week, but the location of the week. They travel around the world through the portals, so... You gotta, you gotta travel. You gotta go to other places that aren't just like the airport and uh, a different city in the same country. Oh yeah, what am I doing here? Once again, not following the arrow. How far are we? I think this playthrough is going a lot more speedily than my Sega Genesis one. Which makes sense. <laughs> I just played this game and then immediately uh, turned around to play it again, basically. So it makes sense. It's, this is all fresh in my mind. Where is this thing? Some goofy, goofy snakes. Alright, I def... Let's shotgun blast him. 
I definitely clear those jumps, didn't I? I thought I did. Oh, it's outside. Yeah, I have to get outside. Very slowly. Very clearly an Egyptian person from Thou- That's something that I, <laughs> games of this era are, are real guilty about is they'll, they'll have a character travel to Egypt. Like, what comes to mind for me is Spar vs. the World. And, um, but, you know, it, like, the character lives in the present day, but when they travel to this, this location, they, um, it's all, like, ancient, the ancient version of it. Oh, uh, there it is. A little secret. So, like, in that game, Bart travels to Egypt, but it's ancient Egypt. <laughs> and there are characters like that guy who are, like, who are clearly, uh, clearly, um, you know, meant to be, like, an ancient person. And, and, well, I mean, it's all fantasy, I guess. I shouldn't think too much about it. Like, why is there a mummy here? Actually, I'm trying to think of whether the characters go to... They go to Peru. I don't know if they go to an Inca temple. I gotta have it... I watched the show once, then I'm rewatching it now, but I don't recall... Um, if they go to an Inca temple, but they definitely go to Peru, so that's something. I don't know. They go to Egypt as well. Portal, go. Uh, so yeah, they, they go to these locations. They do go to like a lava place. Skull Mountain, I guess, is in a lava location. They go to an underwater... So that all these generic levels kind of tie into some of the episodes and toys, but... Uh, they're still very generic representations of the things. Like the underwater level, or un underwa uh, underwater location in the TV show. Oh, this guy hypnotized me? He did something to me. Where do I go with this? Oh. What? What? Just killed me. Was it that snake? That's weird. Alright, well, we only need to drop off one thing here, so let's do that. Oh, I blew it. <laughs> I like the look of shock on that snake's face when he gets bopped. I just could not imagine that anybody would show up and uh, shoot a ping pong, ping pong ball at him. I guess we'll go left. Yeah, this looks right. Oh, no. Huh. Norman, you're not you're not doing anything to help me, Norman. You're a bad friend, Norman. Well, video game Norman. Sorry. <laughs> Like I said, if you, if you get stuck at all, just look around a few feet. You, you'll find some stuff. Oh, you know what, though? I bet I need a rock. So let's send the rock up there as well. Yep. Wait. Okay. There it is. Oh. Arbitrary platform that I cannot pass through. Oh, there's a cap. Alright, there's a cap in there. Where's the portal? There's the portal. So all I need now is to pick up the cap, come back for this, and we're done. But then there's the uh, featherless chicken that <laughs> wants to hassle me. Let's go! <gasps> Whoa, buddy. Whoa, buddy. There it is. 
Was that stage one or stage two? I forget. Man, my eyes are burning. I think it's from the, having... Like, I've, I've recorded some videos where the lighting was real bad. <laughs> and, I've, and I've reminded myself, like, turn on a light, dude. Especially if I'm going to record it to the evenings like I am today. Uh, but that also means there's this really bright light in my face. I don't, I don't know how professionals do it. Having bright lights on you all the time. Uh, it sucks. Nope. Alright, well there's the part. Where am I going with it? Yeah, let's find out. Oh, sweet. I love it. <laughs> I love it when it's like right there. And again, I, I feel I should remind people that on normal difficulty, we'd be have we'd have to collect like five of these or something. Insane. <laughs> Too many. Like you have to collect more of them, there's more stages, I think. It's just all around uh, a rough, rough time. That that thread I talked about where people are trying to hunt down the Amiga version, it seems like they're all fans of the game, but it's also an old thread. So I don't, I don't want to poke the thread to say like, hey, why do you like this game? <laughs> I don't know, that's rude. And that's not the theme of the thread. It's about like finding a lost game versus talking about the merits of the uh, extant versions of the game, but I am curious. Yeah, I, I, I'll poke around some more. Probably talk about it in my history video when I, again, have actually <laughs> done research before trying to record something. Oh no, I picked up the cap and I shouldn't have. Now I have to find. Wow, how far am I? There it is. All right, come on, we can do it. We can make it. Don't give up. No, it was inside the pyramid. And I completely blew it. Yeah. Mm. Damn. I, I should have gone inside the pyramid. And I knew this too. It's, it's, it's the same as this, the Genesis version. Ugh, so now I have to like go back around to the right. I talked about The Simpsons earlier, Bart vs. the World, and Krusty's Funhouse, because uh, that's how I started the channel, is I checked out all of The Simpsons games, but I didn't do long plays, or I didn't do like commentary playthroughs of them, or any playthroughs, really. I, I had played them at one point in time, but when I created the videos I did create, I wasn't playing through them like the way I do for these. And I'm cons- oh, no, I shouldn't even cons- Did you see that? There's a cap in there as well. So let's just get this thing as close as we can. Um, but yeah, so I played all these Simpsons games, and I did talk about them. But only in kind of like a cursory way. But uh, the reason I haven't considered doing, like, commentary runs of those games is because they're- they are 25 games. Uh, and then some of them, like, the Simpsons tapped out can't really even be completed. It's, it's not that kind of game. But like having to play a lot, all those NES games and the Game Boy ones. Oh, jerk. Um, Bart vs. the Space Mutants got ported to a bunch of platforms. And I have to consider like, all right, well, am I going to play all the versions of that game? Because they're so different. Kind of like this. But no, I wouldn't. I would, I would pick one version of it and, and stick with that. Also, what am I doing? There's a cap up there. I can grab the cap. There it is. <laughs> Basically floating at this point. Not even jumping. But yeah, th this works out here because these, g these games are short. Uh, and there's not much else to talk about with Mighty Max, but with The Simpsons, there's a whole lot. All right, well, there you go. That's level four. Level five? Yes. 
they send me sent me straight to level five. On Genesis, they would have sent you back to that screen, and they would have just had like um, both portals lead to the same place. So it, yeah, again, SNES got a le level of polish for uh, for sure since they had extra time for it. No dead ends. But there you go. This is my favorite level. Absolutely. No question. Especially on SNES. On, on Sega Genesis, basically, they don't have the clouds or the sky. It's just like a dark blue, maybe. And then they have that canopy, that solid canopy, that shadow or silhouette of the canopy in the background, and that's it. This looks so, so, much, so much better. I know I've been harping on how much better it look, the backgrounds look on SNES, but... Like, this alone makes the game better. <laughs> like, because, again, the merits of the game are uh, tough to find. So the fact that this game, um, or this version of the game, has all these uh, extra layers of, like, polish makes it a lot nicer to play through. What did I just see up there? Oh. This is new. Virgil on Sega Genesis doesn't have this neat little, like, Animation, dark powers. It's, it's really not helpful tips at all. N nothing that he says is like actually beneficial to like <laughs> completing the level. It's just very generic stuff. But I guess I'll accept that they gave Virgil anything to do <laughs> in the game. Cause um yeah, he's not he's not like a action character, he's like a He's just a, a nerd, really. He's just a very smart nerd. Alright, well we have to find this other item. Where is it? Alright, so... By now I absolutely would not have had uh, <laughs> enough lives to finish this game. I lost so many lives. Like, I would have... Like, I think I've already gone twice the amount of lives needed to... Um, uh, I've already burned too many lives. Like, if I didn't have infinite lives enabled, I would have not made it this far. For sure. I tried to hit... Wait, what? Where's... Huh. Where the heck do they want me to go? Oh, it's gonna be way back in the beginning where I started. That's lame. I mean, I, I guess this is... Like, there were many platformers in this era, and I guess this is maybe better than the generic, like, left-to-right action platformer of the time. Like, it's just more of a... Interesting? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to like find some positive quality to like these game design choices, but I can't get with it. Unrelated, but as I talk about these things, I also sometimes worry that the developers are gonna find my these videos and decide to like watch. They'll, they'll be like, hey, I worked on this. I'm gonna watch this person play through. Because uh, sometimes I'm just you know, negative. <laughs> but I don't know. It just feels like I'm being real with like the experience of playing the game. Actually, yeah, this is like playtesting. This is like when you make a game, you sit someone down in front of it, and then you ask them like, so what are you thinking when you play this game right now? Uh, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just kind of giving the play-by-play -play of what it's like to play this game. Whoa, what are you... That's new. <laughs> On Sega Genesis, I'm pretty sure they don't float that far. Alright, we're getting close. I, I think I expressed earlier my concern that uh, because I'm playing in practice mode, I might not get the ending. And if I don't get the ending, uh, I'm not going to post this video because... Uh, I don't know. Not that anyone's watching these for like to watch a skilled player play.
play through this game, but uh, at the very least. Oh, he got me. Through the tree. Interesting. It must be just distance-based, but... But, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Something about not being a good player. Yes, I'm not a good player. Uh, in some games, I don't really care. <laughs> like, it's not... I'm trying to think of the last time I played any game. With the idea being, like, I want to get better at this game. LCD handhelds, I guess? <laughs> like, that's it. And that's because those games are so short. And it's like, sure, I'll, I'll spend two hours to get good at this LCD handheld. I really want that pineapple. They won't let me take it. Alright, get rid of that guy. That's for hypnotizing me. Are they both in the caves? Well, I guess that one wasn't in a cave, but it did require me to pass through a cave. So what's worse, U using a term like Inca, uh, or having a generic jungle level with generic natives, in terms of cultural sensitivities, I don't know. Oh, well we're not going to go to the left. The collectibles are just like fruit. Uh, jungles have fruits, don't they? Oh. Uh, again, that... <laughs> that sort of arbitrary, like, hey, this object can't pass through this uh, area, this platform, but it, it can pass through this other one. Ooh. That's it. We're done with this stage. So quiet. I have little else to say except to. Uh, oh, except to say, like, I hope there's no more stages after this. <laughs> oh, let's grab Norman. Alright, buddy, come on. Final stretch. It's the final stretch now. Do do do. This game has me singing. Alright, so. I, you know, I did mention that the toy line of Mighty Max uh, came about because they, Bluebird, the, the toy maker, had uh, a toy line called Polly Pocket, which is, oh, I'm trying to think of it, Compact. Is it Compact? It's, it's the cases that um, people hold their makeup inside of. Like, you open the thing up, it's got a mirror, it's got the makeup, and I think that's where Polly Pocket comes from. So obviously aim, aimed at girls. And I think, again, they were, they decided, like, well, you know, if girls are buying these things uh, with toys, same same idea. It's got like a little, like Polly Pocket is like a little character inside of the thing, and you play with her, and you open the compact, and it's a building or something. So they figured like, all right, boys might like this too, and they did. Mighty Max uh, uh, was successful. Oh, one more. Uh, but I, ha I haven't looked up if there were any others. Well, there must have been. Like, w once Polly Pocket blew up, and then Mighty Max, there must have been other companies that stole the concept. <laughs> and just ran with it, and came up with their own, like, miniature characters thing. But, but like any pop culture, any kid would want the legit version. Like, kids will know if it's not the version from the TV commercials, and they'll, they'll complain to their parents when they bought them. The, the generic version of it. Oh. Oh, picked up a cap. Let's very quickly find... Alright, there's the portal. Let's hope that the machine is very close by. Okay, okay. I think we can do it. We did it. So, uh, what I feared 
has actually happened, which is that the SNES version of The Adventures of Mighty Max um, does not give you the full ending when you're in practice mode. Because on Sega Genesis, I played through on easy mode and the, the complete ending is there. So you can play through on any difficulty and you get the full ending. Not so in SNES. So in the year between these releases, they decided to change the SNES version in this way as well, where practice mode, it gets you the final like text message saying congratulations, but not the actual ending uh, slideshow, basically is what it is. Uh, the ending sort of bits that close out the story uh, is missing. So what I'm going to do here is I did record that ending on a separate playthrough, just as a video. So I'm just going to play back the video of the ending here. Um, and we'll just pretend. Well, we won't pretend. I definitely didn't complete this on normal. I didn't earn this ending. But uh, I, I don't want to have to play this game again. So I'm just going to run the ending here uh, along with the credits. And we'll call it there. So let's go ahead and kick that off. Real jerk move, I gotta say. I guess they call it practice mode. So again, this is exactly the ending uh, you'd see on Sega Genesis if you completed it there on easy or normal. But on SNES, you have to complete this game on normal difficulty. This to see this. Uh, I didn't mention this for Sega, but look at that weird design choice. They made him like a red demon instead of like a pale skull face guy. That's really weird. I don't know what where that comes from. Who makes that kind of choice? But anyway, yeah, same exact uh, ending as Sega Genesis. Max wins. Skullmaster runs off. They, they are the exact same images. I think they look worse in SNES though. Some kind of compression or something. So if you played it on practice mode, you would see this message. This is what, but you wouldn't see any of those finale uh, slides. So that's kind of a bummer if you're a kid. Oh, is it WJS design? I think I've been saying WSJ design. My bad. Anyway, those, this team of people who you're looking at now, uh, which I think is the same team as Sega Genesis. I don't recall if there's any new names. Or, I do know that on SNES, they don't think Ocean Software people anymore. They, they left that out. I don't know why. Oh, maybe the testers weren't there on Sega Genesis. I don't recall. Anyway. There we go. That's The Adventures of Mighty Max on Sega or Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And that's it for the video. So thanks for watching this. There'll be a few more after this, but until then, uh, that's it. See ya.